young lady. Hi. Um, first of all, two comments. One, um, as Obama goes around the country campaigning and uh, talks about the Do Nothing Congress and um, how, how poor... Don't you love that? Let me stop you. <laughs> Do nothing. It's, See, it's, I love it. It's, it's a good political move. Do the Republican... What, what is Congress? I always thought Congress was the House and the Senate. Yeah. Who controls the Senate? Go ahead. <laughs> Senate, do nothing, Congress. Well, my, my point is, is that he, he goes around and he talks about continuously how broken our system of government, our government is. And my fear is that he's trying to convince the people, I mean, because our government system is by design, and that's to protect us from tyranny. So don't ever let anybody convince you our system of government is broken, because it's not. No, it was designed to be this way. Right. Especially in a fight like this. Right, but he, he uses that over and over and he, over he's, again. He's, he's, look, I caught a lot of grief because three months ago when he called this big joint session of Congress to announce another jobs plan, I didn't go and I came home. He has been running for re-election since he gave his State of the Union back in January. The, and I gotta tell you this, the president, in many ways, is not relevant. Democrats in D.C. don't really pay attention to him anymore. He's not serious. He's just, he has not proposed anything serious to address the problems we've got. You may not like what the Republicans have proposed, but I, I don't see anybody else putting forth anything. Go ahead. Okay, well, my second comment or, or question is about, um, back in 2008, while he was campaigning, <coughs> he had, um, Stated, and this is a quote, we cannot continue to rely on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well funded. Now he's systematically dismantling our, our military. Are you aware that there is part that uh, his militia is in the Affordable Care Act? Yes, there's some troubling language in there uh, pertaining to some sort of civilian, yes. Right, it's the uh, civilian, the Commission Corps and Ready Reserves that pretty much gives him the power for any type of emergency. I, you know, look. funding supposedly started in 2010 to 2014, it'll be ready. Yes, but. Um, the funding for a number of those aspects of that plan can be held. Can, can, Congress can hold a lot of that funding. Look, let, let me make a real important point. And again, no, no matter where everybody is politically, I really hope we have a great campaign next year and it's all issues based. Um, for those of you who can't stand this president, I hope you focus on the issues. For those of you who are going to go after any, whatever, whoever the Republican nominee is, I hope it can be a campaign on the issues. America needs that. And it's, it, we shouldn't need to go beyond the issues. If you just looked at the issues, look what the differences are. Republicans want to start drilling tomorrow. They're near anywhere. This president will never let us drill. That's just one issue. This president really believes that Obamacare is the first step toward government-run health care. Oh, God love him. Maybe, maybe God, I love that. If that's what you believe, I want to hear it. Republicans want to repeal Obamacare. There should be, if, if this election just focuses on these issues, America in this revolution will take a great step. But if we start talking about Obama and all these other crazy issues and, and Mitt Romney and always a Mormon and all these other issues, we're going to lose. As a country, we're going to lose. Don't you think if Mitt Romney's elected, we would lose as conservatives? It, it's a, it's, hey, look, it's a, it's a school right. of thought. It's a school of thought. I can only give you one man's opinion. That's mine. Right. And here's how I, I mean, if he was to win the presidency, I don't see us moving forward with uh, changing the agenda. Then you you got to go where your heart and head tell you. Here's what my heart and head tell me. Every single day, my opinion only, that this president's in the White House, he is destroying what makes this country great. So, so, my, just, just my opinion.
kidding me? I want to find somebody who can beat him. I don't have a dog in that fight yet. It's like I, saying we elected Kirk because we had no one else to vote for. Right? And, and that's and that, that that's why it will be fascinating. So it's not a good stage. It'll be fascinating to see who the Republican nominee is because we're still going through that internal debate. All the way in the back, sir. Yes. Thank you very much for having this event. Thank you. I was at your event at uh, North Campus here at Woodstock. And, and you came know. back to another one? <laughs> <laughs> It was the lady who makes the Tea Party look liberal who was there, but she wasn't even going to know Oh, never mind. Um, I wanted to thank you for having the event. This is civics in action. Absolutely. This is incredible. And uh, it shows that all of us are Tea Parties at heart because we can behave respectfully toward each other, and I appreciate that. Here's my question. You did something that was out of character for most politicians. You answered two questions I asked you regarding small business. You said, around 200 employees would define, SBA says it's 500 employees, 500. which has three to five employers, I think, in the McHenry County. You said around 200, and I understood the reason for about, because everybody needs some wiggle room. You also said you agreed that uh, anyone above that level probably, and that's a fair word, doesn't need any tax or legislative uh, dispensation, for lack of a better term. <coughs> I'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself, sole practitioner. Um, I responded to your email, went through the website where you can post a question, thanking you for, the, for those remarks, <coughs> and expecting some follow-up. Did we get back? Yes, you did. And it was the most um, vanilla, generic <laughs> email I've ever received in my life. I want to know who wrote it, because I have to talk I to I can them. tell you it wasn't But me. here's the issue. The yeah. issue is, I would like to see in the next year, otherwise I think you and every other legislature should give up your salary for the next year if nothing gets done, I would like to see some hardcore propositions that are focused on that group of small business owners. Well, who, who are the backbone of the real job growth in this country absolutely. for the last 30 years, that's all. Uh, and no, hey, and that's thanks. what I was hoping to hear. And, and no. here, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, please, oh please, we'd like to know what you're going to do. No, I'm glad. I'm glad you said Thank something. You. Look, uh, Helene gets mad at me because maybe I'm stepping out on a limb here. I have probably given out my personal email to more people than any other member of Congress because uh, that way you get a direct personal from me. Do me a favor, sir. Before you leave, yes. Let me give you my personal email. I mean this. Because you know what happens, our office gets flooded with things. And I got a great staff in DC, and I always, every week or two, I tell them, when you're responding to constituents, give a good personal response. And, and often we do, but often, you know, sometimes we fall off that wagon. One other thing, I also appreciate the virtual town halls that you have. Do you like those? But not without warning. <laughs> this is gonna happen in two days, instead oh. of just a call on the phone. Because more of us, I mean, we all have schedules. If you're busy, you do, we do, whatever everything. Um, it would give us an opportunity to hopefully adjust our schedules to participate in those events. How many people like those tele-town halls where we do telephone town halls? Raise your hand if you like them. Raise your hand if you don't. How many people are sick of, give me some feedback, am I doing too many automated calls <laughs> letting you know that I'm doing a town hall in your neighborhood. How many people are sick of my automatic phone calls? Oh, put your hand down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, I worry about that. I can promise you this. I will never do those automated phone calls for anything besides town halls. Um, on small business. On small business. No, 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 that's okay. But make sure you've got my email before you leave. And that way you'll get, we'll direct, I want that. I Your promise, congressman is I, extending it. And I, and out of courtesy, I promise that it doesn't go on Twitter. If it's Thank you. Um, <laughs> on, hey, look, again, I don't know, on, on small business, I don't know what we can do in the next year. We can try to chip away at some things, but this president and the Senate, just, they're not going to agree with a lot of what we want to do. I, I, to me, it's pretty simple. I want to lower taxes, I want to repeal regulations. I want to take this thing called the estate tax, I want to get rid of it and I never want to hear from it again. 
Capital gains tax I want to phase down and phase out. There's a lot of flat tax. We talk about comprehensive tax reform. There's a lot Republicans want to do on the tax side that we really just can't do for the next year because we don't run D.C. Yes, sir? I worry about the waste they cover. We have Fannie and Freddie. Nobody was watching the store there as far as I can see. They had thousands of forms that were either complete fraud, no inspections made, our money was thrown away, and who profited? The people of, that uh, are the same that always profit, the courts. Um, you are right. Uh, this is part of uh, this is really part of the difficult time we're going through right now. There is huge waste in government. Folks, this isn't hard to understand. And this goes back to what you said. This is our fault. We've asked government to do so much, and government's gotten so big, of course there's going to be waste, fraud, and abuse in everything government does. And, and of course there are going to be lobbyists. It's like any time you create a new government program, a thousand lobbyists are born. If you want to get rid of lobbyists, shrink government. Um, what we're trying to do, and we've done this a little bit this last year, but find enough Democrats who are willing to join Republicans to go after certain aspects of egregious waste. But it's not easy, because what you and I think is waste, other people might think is, is, is we need more of the same. Um, Medicare alone, you look at Medicare alone, there's almost $200 billion worth, worth, worth of waste a year just in Medicare. Yes, sir. Yes, it's throwing uh, the word government around. What is your function? <laughs> well, what's your first name? Clarence. Lawrence? Clarence. Clarence. That's it. That is what this thing is about right now. That is why Americans are having a big fight. What is the role of government? Because we've now asked government to do so much that we're broke. And a lot of what government's doing, they're not doing very well. So if you ask me what I think the role of government is, you're going to get a much different answer than you may get among other people in this room. I think we've got to get back to where government does the bare good essentials. Protect me overseas, secure my borders, keep my streets safe, uh, enforce our laws, and then get the heck out of the way and let the rest of us live our lives. Amen. Now, I can tell you, not everybody in Washington believes that. Yes, sir. Piggyback on that, I think part of what's going on is we're not defining what, what people are asking for. Uh, I think Clarence said socialism earlier. And you seem a little hesitant to say whether that was truly socialism or not. Why? Well, you know why? No, it, it was strategic in my head. It was purely strategic. I think when, when, if I say President Obama is a socialist, I feel like, well, a lot of people over here will smile, but I feel like I'll, I feel like I'll lose half the crowd. But then you've got to define what that so is. I just, so what I'd rather do is say respectfully, here's President Obama's America. You make a dollar, he wants you to give 60 cents of it to him, and big daddy government will take care of everybody. Now, you and I might know, <clears throat> that sounds a lot like socialism, but I think people can understand that. I think, especially a lot of young people, when you say socialism, I don't think they know what you mean. Right, I mean, that's a problem. Yeah. We don't have, well, we do have time, but we don't have a lot of time to educate. <laughs> yes, sir. The House passed 15 to 20 bills. Yes. They're now in the Senate. What can you guys do to promote and uh, publicize the fact that you're not the do nothing Congress, that you've I, got a number of things I could take. I, I could tape this to my head and walk around with it all day. This is now 22 jobs bills the House has passed. Is the leadership doing the publicity component they need? Eh, yeah, you know what, Republicans, let's be honest, I'm a Republican. We tend to do a lousy job of marketing what we're doing. That's part of it. Uh, part of it is the president has the bully pulpit, so it's a lot easier for him to talk. 
But you're right. You make a great point. Republicans have passed about 22 jobs bills. How many people knew that? Not many. But again, they all go over to the Senate, and the Senate has only taken one up. So how many people know the Senate hasn't passed a budget in 930 days? Do nothing Congress. Um, <clears throat> part of it is marketing. And here's what I've always said. As a guy who's a limited government guy, I'm a Republican, let's be honest, everybody in this room, Republicans have a harder message to sell, right? There are times I'd love to wake up and be a Democrat. <laughs> All I got to do is say this. I'm a Democrat. I'll give you whatever you want. You want health care? I'll give it to you. You want, you want daycare to take care of your kids? I'll give it to you. You want a free lunch? I'll give it to you. Student, uh, you want me to absolve your student loans? I'll do it. I'll do it. That's Democrats true. just want to keep giving. That's an easy thing to sell. No? That's socialism. There he goes again. <laughs> Security! <laughs> no, but what's the Republican message? That inflates the economy and that's what increases the tax. Socialism. I know, I know, I know. The Republican message is... Socialism. I know, but what's the Republican message? Socialism. Socialism. <laughs> if it's not your message, it's the Republican Oh, well, okay. Before but Obama, we had socialism. Generally, you're right. Generally, the Republicans try to say... I'm not going to give you things. It's your life. You're responsible for your own life. You make money, keep more of your money, and you take care of your own life. That's a harder message to sell. It's a lot easier to say, I'll give you things. Well, you know what? That's why we're in the mess we're in. Yes, sir. Yeah, 